Hi folks, I'm The Lost Mapper, and in this video I'll be showing you a convenient way to run PostGIS that works the same whether you're on Windows, Mac, or Linux. In this video, we're going to be using Docker to stand up a PostGIS server. Docker provides an easy way to run prepackaged applications. Those applications might be databases like Postgres or MySQL, development environments for languages like Python or Ruby, full web applications like WordPress or Drupal, or even operating systems like Ubuntu or Alpine Linux. To see what's available, you can head to hub.docker.com to browse and search for images. Additionally, the OSGEO wiki has a list of GIS-related Docker images that you might find useful. To install Docker, you're gonna to wanna to head to docker.com and then click on the Get Started button. And then you'll want to choose the download for your particular operating system. Once the installer is finished downloading, you're gonna to wanna to double click on it. On Mac, you can just drag the application into your applications folder. On Windows, you'll probably have a bunch of next buttons to click. Once it's done installing, you'll then want to start up the Docker application. We're going to be using a tool called Compose to define which services we wanna run with Docker. To do this, we'll wanna make a directory to hold our configuration file and our data. So I'm going to change into a workspace directory that I have, and then I'm going to make a new directory called uh, PostGIS Dockerized. I'm then going to change into that uh, directory. Next, we wanna create a file called docker-compose.yaml, and I'm gonna use VS Code to do that, but you can use any text editor to do that. So I'm gonna create a new file. I'm gonna call that docker-compose.yml. And then I'm going to create a file that defines the services that I, I wanna run. So this needs to start with a line called services. And then the first service that I'm gonna define, the first and only is PostGIS. And that can be named anything you want. You could name this database. You can name this DB. I'm just gonna go with PostGIS. And then inside of there, we need to define the image that we wanna use. So this is going to be the postgist slash postgist image, and that we would have found on the Docker Hub. Uh, we're going to add a restart setting, which is always, which just makes sure that the service is always restarted if it happens to stop. Then we wanna set up a few environment variables. So these are gonna kind of define how the database is set up once it spins up. So I'm going to set Postgres DB to GIS, and that's the name of the database. I'm gonna set Postgres user to GIS, that's the name of the user that has access to that database. And I'm going to set Postgres password to just password. Thank you, autocomplete. The next thing we need to do is actually expose the database port. So if you watch my other videos, you know that the default port for Postgres is 5432. And what we need to do is tell this container that its port 5432 should be opened up to the computer that this is running on as also 5432. So we're just gonna make an entry for 5432, maps to 5432. And then the last piece we wanna do is define a volume. So this is basically taking a directory in the container that's gonna run PostGIS and setting up to actually exist on your local computer. And that will basically allow it to exist between runs. So you can shut it down and start it up again, and all that data will be stored on your local computer. So we're going to use a directory called data slash postgis. And inside of the container, that's going to be the var lib postgresql slash data directory and then you wanna save that file. So now that we have our configuration file in place, we're gonna head back into the terminal in our project. And to start up this container with this service, we're gonna type docker compose up. And what that's gonna do is download that PostGIS image and then start a container running that image. And then we'll see that show up inside of the Docker desktop app underneath the container section. 
And it looks like I have a typo in my configuration file. I do. I typed postgred and not postgres. So I'm going to fix that. Postgres. I'm going to clear this terminal and then try that again. It should go faster this time because the image has already been downloaded. And then if I head over to Docker, I can see that it's running. And you can see that it's creating the database and then adding the PostGIS extension to that database. So now that our PostGIS server is running via Discord, we can connect to it from QGIS. So head over into the browser and right click on Postgres SQL and choose new connection. I'm gonna name this one Docker PostGIS. The host is going to be localhost. The port is going to be 5432. The database is what we named it in the YAML file, which is GIS. And we can click test connection and provide the username and the password, which is GIS and password. And click OK. It's able to connect, so we can hit OK. And then you can open up that particular instance and we can create a new schema called learning. And in there we can create a new table, call this points. We'll add a field called name of type varcar with the length of 64. Set the geometry type to point and click OK. And that table is created. We can then open up that schema and double click on that layer to add it to our project. We can toggle on editing and then use add point feature to start adding some points. Here's a quick small tip. If you double click on your layer and you go to the attributes form and choose ID, if you change the widget type to hidden, then it won't show up and it can't be edited. You can also uncheck editable here. So now when I edit or add a point, it'll just ask me for the name and I don't need to worry about what the ID is. So I'll add a few points here, click OK. I will save those changes and turn off editing. And if I open up that attribute layer, I can see my features with their unique IDs. To stop our server, we can head back to the terminal that we were in and just press Control C and that will shut it down. An alternate way to start the server is to use Docker Compose up, but add the dash dash detach flag. And that will essentially run it in the background. We can see that it's running over here, but it doesn't stop your console, your terminal session from running. You can also watch the logs for that particular instance by doing Docker Compose logs and passing the follow flag to it. And now when you hit Control C, you're just stopping watching the logs. Uh, you can see that it's still running over on the left. And if you want to shut it down when it's running in the background, while you're in the directory for the project, you can type Docker Compose down and that will shut it down. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. I'll see you next time.